This segment of Delmarva Life is brought to you by Peninsula Regional Medical Center. We're talking matters of the heart this week in honor of the big heart holiday on Friday. And today we turn our attention to a condition that the World Health Organization recently described as a growing and serious global health problem. It's not heart disease, it's not heart attacks. In fact, it's not even heart failure. It's something called atrial fibrillation or AFib. And to put it into context, just how serious this condition can be, according to the American Heart Association, untreated AFib doubles the risk of heart-related death, and it causes a four to five-fold increased risk for stroke. If that's not scary enough, many people don't even know they have atrial fibrillation. So what should you be looking for? How can you prevent it? Joining us today with some answers is Dr. Stephen Keim, who is the director of Electrophysiology Lab at Peninsula Regional Medical Center. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us thank this you. afternoon. So atrial fibrillation, what is it? It's a disordered, rapid, irregular heartbeat that is a short circuit in the normal electrical activation of the heart. If you see on the tracings there, those are electrical tracings of the heart. The one on the top labeled one is in atrial fibrillation. The one on the bottom is in sinus rhythm. That's a regular and you, heartbeat. In a, that's a regular heartbeat. Uh -huh. that, that's right. So if you look at the red arrow, you see a very chaotic, very frenzied looking uh, irregular activity. And that's exactly what fibrillation is. It's a chaotic electrical activation. Our word for quiver is fibrillation. So instead of beating in a normal predictable pattern, the way you see on the bottom tracing right. with a simple hump, which is a regular ordered contraction, this is a very chaotic and very frenzied. So there's no mechanical contribution for the top part of the heart to the overall function gotcha. of the heart. Oh, okay. The other thing you notice on that is the irregularity, and that's a very uh, prominent feature of this uh, heartbeat. There are other heartbeats that may be fast, but notice on the top the irregular patterns of it. The, the next spike, which is the activity of the bottom part of the heart, mm -hmm. is not predicted from the previous one, whereas the, the tracing on the bottom is like clockwork. It's lub-dub, lub-dub, lub-dub. The not. tracing on the top is a little bit more like the cha-cha-cha. Right, it's, uh, right. Here and there, here and there. <laughs> and, and AFib can lead to more serious health problems, can it? it? It absolutely can. It is both associated with all the realms of, of cardiovascular uh, diseases that you'll be talking about the, the, this month uh, with it, with all the risk factors. It's associated with diabetes, with electrolyte abnormalities, uh, with high blood pressure. Uh, so it keeps company with the things that we generally talk about uh, with it, but as you pointed out already, the, 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 the prominent feature, it makes whatever cardiovascular condition you might have significantly worse, both in terms of management pro patterns, both in terms of symptoms, but also there's a mortality uh, implication associated with it. So it is very important that atrial fibrillation is identified and treated appropriately. Okay, so who's most at risk? Clearly, there is an age-associated in increase, so right. that 5% of the population by the age of 60 will have experienced atrial fibrillation, 10% of the population by the age of 70 will experience atrial fibrillation, and it's estimated that one in four of us will at some point in our lives, earlier or later, have an episode of atrial fibrillation that will necessitate the medical treatment. Now the thing about okay. AFib is those who have it may not even realize they have it? That's correct. Uh, and that, that's one of the conundrums and very confusing things for physicians to deal with. We have sort of two different patient populations. Some patients are, are absolutely devastated by the development of atrial fibrillation. They show up in the emergency room. They're absolutely uh, convinced that something horrible is going to happen, and they just feel horrible. But much more insidious are the people who just notice, gee, I just can't walk as far as I did. I can't bicycle. We see this a lot in our sort of athletic types of individuals where they have a performance level that they've sort of learned to be comfortable with and associated with, and now they can't do what they used to do. And you know what? They're saying, I'm not that old to, to, to feel this old. Right. So is there, are there any particular things we can be looking for? Well, I think the, the irregularity, we go back to that uh, over and over again. Most health care uh, uh, providers are trained to take a pulse anytime uh, you get your blood pressure checked, you get your pulse, and it will be strike, striking, not just necessarily the rate, because this is frequently a very fast heart rate, uh, but also with the irregularity of the pulse. So right. either the individual patient 
or the healthcare provider can do it. The patient will notice that irregularity as a skip beat, okay? We talked about the, f the lack of contribution, mechanical contribution to the heart. So that combined with the irregularity can create that sense of shortness of breath that patients will uh, uh, have. But oftentimes it's just a sense that, gee, I'm not feeling very well. Uh, uh, with, with it. So how does a doctor detect it? By the irregularity. Uh, yeah. Almost universally a, a, a physician will be warned by a staff uh, that the pulse is irregular. Is and it a mechanical then, thing that, that helps you detect it? Or? Well it's the pulse. So that the, the, the bottom part of the heart which actually delivers the contraction that makes the pulse that you feel in your wrist or, 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 or elsewhere or measure. That's what you measure when you measure your uh, uh, bl blood pressure. That is being directed to beat at a particular rate. The okay. electrical housing, so to speak, the, the distributor cap, if you want to think of it in yeah. terms of automotive terms, is, is housed in the top part of the heart. So if all the wires are connected and it's appropriate, then it's a very regular lub-dub, lub-dub, lub-dub. Right. Can we prevent it? Is there so, something we can do? <clears throat> the prevention is, is generally in the broader population uh, di directed at avoiding the cardiovascular risk factors of the heart healthy lifestyle. There are certain behaviors that certainly uh, put a person at risk. Um, uh, the caffeinated beverages, right. uh, which seems every other week changes whether it's good or bad. I think right, what right. is fair to say is moderation. And I think that same uh, I I is associated with, with, with alcohol. Okay. Uh, we frequently see a change in alcohol intake associated with more atrial fibrillation. There's an entity that we term holiday heart frequently right. because patient, patients' uh, intake of caffeine or alcohol in and around the holidays is frequently increased, and we see an increase in the emergency room vi 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 visits uh, w with that. And when in doubt, ask your doctor. When in doubt, ask your doctor. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. And Thank if you. you would like to read more from Peninsula Regional Medical Center about atrial fibrillation, go to delmarvalife.com and click on the show tab.